Welcome back Tuesday Hot Stove. This is such a cool photo on so many levels. The 1995 Rice Owls. And if you look closely, you'll see a couple of familiar faces in this you gotta shot. Got to look real close because we're not zooming in. Well, you know how we roll. Uh, <laughs> Lance Berkman and Jose Cruz Jr. were teammates not only on this collegiate squad, uh, but in 08, they were teammates in big league Houston as well with the Astros. A combined almost 30 years of major league experience between Jose Jr. and uh, and Lance. And here they are as Astros teammates. And it, it all kind of comes full circle next week. Both of these guys are collegiate coaches. Lance with Houston Baptist and uh, Jose Cruz Jr. is a head coach at Rice University. And they're going to meet uh, head to head their squads next week, February 23rd. Such a cool story, and it's a pleasure to have both Lance and, and Jose on Hot Stove with us. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let, let's, uh, let's start with you, Lance, on this, uh, I, I guess we could call it friendly rivalry. Do you guys interact regularly as, as head coaches at the collegiate level, uh, and do you kind of slow that down when you face each other head-to-head -head as you will next week? Well, I mean, our, our friendship is not going to be impacted by the results on the field. And by the way, I mean, I think calling it a rivalry is a bit of a exaggeration. I mean, in order for there to be a rivalry, you have to have a, a couple of significant um, uh, participants. And, and to this point, you know, our school has not been nearly on the national stage uh, with success like Rice has. And so, you know, we're hoping to make it a rivalry, but I don't know that it is one uh, at this point. You see the downplay there, guys? Yeah. Completely downplay. He's already <laughs> soft selling it. Already, man. <laughs> hey, so, so, so for our viewers, take them back to uh, – I'll start with you, Jose. Where does your friendship start and how, how long you known each other? Oh, well, let me tell you how my friendship started. Uh, <laughs> Lance, Lance, is, Lance is a recruit. He's coming in, right? And my roommate's playing first base. He sees my roommate and he goes, oh yeah, I could beat him out. <laughs> I like that, that guy. <laughs> that's how I it began. I don't know if that's the true story. That's how the I legend of Lance that, but... Berkman began at Rice. And, the, right. and so that was Lance being recruited to Rice. Jose was already at Rice playing. And then, uh, that's right. so fast forward a little bit, your junior year, Jose, uh, Lance is your, your roommate on the road. Am I correct? That is, that is correct. So that Lance, correct. how'd that come about? I think Coach Graham just like, you know, he assigned the room situation and he wanted me to be with the, with the guy that he felt like maybe I could learn from. And and so I think that's how that that ended up. Actually, I have a great picture of, of me and and Junior together uh, after one of our games there, which I, I, you know, put in my keepsake book. So that was uh, those were good times back then, for sure. We were talking about it, you know, and I don't know how you feel about this, Junior, but we, you know, when you look at like we're going to play A&M this year and we're going to play, of course, Rice and, and we go to Texas. I know you guys open with Texas. And I was thinking, man, you know, when I was when we were back at Rice, those seemed like such big games. And then we, you know, we had we had some success. And I thought, well, you know, how does a small school like Rice have so much success against those bigger schools? And the answer is because we had four future major leaguers uh, on on that team in 95. <laughs> so I just remember thinking, oh, yeah, that's right. We were, we were pretty good. So. Who were the who was on the team? Yeah, who were the other guys that got to the big leagues? Mark Quinn. I, was, I, I, hit, I hit third. Mark Quinn hit fourth. Lance Berkman hit fifth. And Matt Anderson was our closer. Wow. Yeah. So that's we had four. Right there. Am I missing one? That's pretty good stuff. No, that's it. Well, Tim Burdak, but he was Tim before, He wasn't on yeah. that the team. Uh, where'd y'all get that footage? That's pretty good. Hey, man, we're MLB Network. We we okay, did, did my bad. got it covered. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want to ask not, you know we also had Jacques Landry who made it up to AAA so we had yeah. we had some good 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 players I, I want to ask you guys about how how college coaching uh, has changed or how you perceive it to have changed from the time you played at Rice to what you're doing now as head coaches as the craft changed did you want to do anything differently than what was done when you played well I'll, I'll speak for Lance on this one uh, no one was going to have the experience we had unless they came through right. <laughs> that's right. So that's, we're not even going to be close to what, what that experience is like. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I think <laughs> you're talking about Wayne Graham, about Wayne oh, Graham yeah. correct. <laughs> um, I, I mean, it's like, it, we're, we're, we're different. It's like a different era. It's a different type of human that's playing. Now the kids are different social media, et cetera. 
Um, it's just a, a different way to approach it. I mean, I'm not a yeller or anything like that. I expect certain things and hold people accountable, basically. Well, how about the recruiting part? Uh, you know, a lot of kids are committing their freshman year of high yeah. school to go to colleges. What about the recruiting circuit? I think that'd be the biggest challenge. Lance, I'll throw it to you. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, for schools like us, we're not into recruiting kids at a real young age because it, it just doesn't make any sense for us to do it. If you, but, you know, if you identify somebody you like at that age, they're going to be holding out to go to, you know, an A&M or a Texas or a bigger school. So, you know, we, we look at maybe one or two as an example. We have, you know, our 23 class. We pretty much already have that done. We're starting to look at the 24s, which are, uh, current sophomores in high school, we won't make offers on them, you know, until maybe this summer, or late this summer, and you try to get in, in early on a few guys you like. But but for me, the biggest challenge in that is learning how to evaluate talent because, you know, it's it's hard to, when you look at a kid that's 15, 16 years old and try to project, hey, what is this guy uh, going to be? And by the time he's 20, 21, uh, for me, they, they all look similar. It's like, okay, that guy's okay. He's not great. You know, that, that kind of thing. So I think developing an eye for, uh, for the talent that you're looking for is the biggest challenge. And, and that's where you have to have good people. I mean, my recruiting coordinator, Tyler Bremer has been in the amateur coaching ranks for a long time. So I trust his opinion on things and I'm trying to learn and get out and see as much as I can, but that that's where I, I'm, I'm not nervous about coaching baseball, but I am nervous about, you know, can you look at a 15 year old and say, hey, that's a guy that that's really going to be good in college. Yeah, no, that's an art form. No doubt. Jose, what about you You're at a high academic school? How, how does that yeah. play into recruiting? It 100 percent plays. We, we can't recruit. I mean, Rice ultimately is not for everyone. There is some sort of uh, academic borderline or or bottom, if you want to call it that, uh, that's above average. So that that's part of it. It plays it plays into who we get after because sometimes it's just not a match academically. Like everything else is great except for the academic part. So that's definitely a component for us. But I mean, we don't have that many people that we recruit a year. It's maybe eleven, um, I think, on a high on the high. So we have to be real careful. We try to cherry pick the guys that that are fits. And again, it's tough. Like, like you mentioned, the whole freshman thing and sophomore thing. I mean, we have like one sophomore or a class 24 maybe committed and that's about it. Uh, we kind of like to, to wait a little bit longer. Uh, like my, my head recruiter is Paul Yanish, who also uh, played in oh, the big yeah. leagues and also was a rice owl. So, you know, we, we kind of share that same belief on just waiting a little bit longer on, on most occasions. I mean, sometimes you just have to, uh, be aggressive on a younger on a you know sophomore or freshman, but usually it's like let's let's see let's watch them develop let's see what they move like. Uh, so, I mean it's it's definitely the the part that is very competitive for college baseball. You guys, uh, as you know, and you mentioned Paul Yanis, there's so many notable big league alum who are real active at the college level. And let's go to Twitter here for this from uh, Adam Rubin by the way was just checking the Hofstra baseball schedule to see where Frank Catalanato was making his D1 debut turns out it's at Houston Baptist led by first year college coach Lance Berkman you guys combined to play over 3,000 games together uh, Lance oh, are, you, are you in touch with Frank and are you looking forward to this. Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I haven't, I haven't talked to Frank yet, but but he's a great guy. I've known him, you know, obviously from playing against him with the Rangers and then with the Blue Jays a little bit. But, um, you know, it, it is interesting. I think you do see more pro guys gravitating towards college. And I think it's largely because the major league organizations have, have kind of gone towards, you know, the – the laboratory, so to speak, as, as opposed to the, the guinea pig that was that was in the lab. So uh, I think, you know, there's so much there's so much reliance on analytics and so much computer uh, modeling and those type of things that the the actual baseball experience has been devalued or is less valued, I should say, by major league organizations. And so, you know, we the guys that are that want to be in the game that want to have an impact on young men's lives. I mean, we gravitate towards uh, an arena where we're still, you know, allowed to talk about, hey, how do you hit a big situation? And some of the things that uh, that don't show up on the stat sheet, some of the things that you can't 
uh, you can't generate with the computer. And I think those are valuable. So I think, you know, you'll, you're going to continue to see more and more ex pro guys in the college game. And I think the college game is going to benefit from it. It's awesome. Uh, there's no doubt it about is it. It's a great on, visit, on my guys. My final visit, my final take, I will get into that a little bit because there's a lot of guys from pro baseball coaching the college ranks. Yeah, really cool visiting with you guys. Thanks for the time. I know you're going to enjoy uh, managing against each other next week. We'll report on the <laughs> results here. And, and thanks again for checking in with us. All right, thank thanks, guys. guys. Lance Berkman and Jose Cruz. Awesome, Jr. guys. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, man, those were, those were the most prolific words of the offseason. Oh, I mean, I 